Suzak syndrome. A young lady with a history of episodic migraine with visual aura, presented with transient weakness of arm, and word finding difficulty associated with headache. She has intermittent vertigo with transient blurry vision and non pulsatile tinnitus for several months. She has got hearing loss with a robotic quality of auditory perception. John O. Suzak described the first case in the mid 1970s in a young woman with a previously unreported triad of encephalopathy, branch retinal artery occlusions, and deafness. Suzak syndrome is a rare disorder caused by occlusions of microvessels in the brain, retina, and inner ear, with an autoimmune cause. More than 300 cases of Suzak syndrome have been reported in the literature worldwide with female individuals, aged 20 to 40 years, affects females more frequently than male individuals. The prevalence of this disease may not be as rare as once thought, given that the full clinical triad rarely exists at time of initial presentation and many cases are often being misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis. The most common manifestation is central nervous system symptoms, followed by visual and hearing or vestibular disturbances. Headache is present in more than 80% of patients and often resemble a migraine. Central nervous system symptoms are focal neurological deficits owing to transient ischemic attack or stroke. Later in the disease, patients can develop global deficits, such as encephalopathy, or dementia. Magnetic resonance imaging of the brain typically shows punctate hyperintense deep white and gray matter lesions consistent with microinfarctions, some of which may have restricted diffusion suggestive of acute ischemia and contrast enhancement. Involvement of the central portion of the corpus callosum, rather than the periphery, as in multiple sclerosis, as evidenced by presence of so-called snowball lesions is considered a characteristic sign of Suzak syndrome. Echocardiography is usually low yield, because the deep location of the microinfarctions, including the corpus callosum, makes cardioembolism less likely. Cerebrospinal fluid studies may show pleocytosis and elevated protein, typically without oligoclonal bands. Catheter-based cerebral angiography results are usually normal. An audiogram usually shows bilateral sensor and neural hearing loss. Retinal fluorescent angiography reveals unilateral or bilateral branched retinal artery occlusions and our arterial wall hyperfluorescence owing to microvasculitis, even in patients who are visually asymptomatic. Fundoscopy typically shows branched retinal artery occlusions as well as retinal arterial atheromatous plaques, ischemic fluffy white patches and or tiny hemorrhages. Suzak syndrome is frequently misdiagnosed as multiple sclerosis owing to the presence of white matter lesions, corpus callosum involvement, and CSF apleocytosis. However, absence of oligoclonal bands, involvement of deep gray matter, and presence of retinal and auditory pathology argue against the diagnosis of multiple sclerosis. Recurrent oral and genital aftus ulcers uvitis or retinal vasculitis, pathology, and skin or vascular lesions, are characteristic features of Bisset disease. But, lack of ulcers and presence of corpus callosa pathology makes the diagnosis of Bisset disease unlikely. The imaging phenotype and involvement of hearing do not support the diagnosis of cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukoencephalopathy. encephalopathy. Genetic testing for cerebral autosomal dominant arteriopathy with subcortical infarcts and leukencephalopathy may be considered in patients with cryptogenic stroke with appropriate MRI findings. Based on the idea that Suzak syndrome may have an inflammatory causative mechanism, immunosuppressive agents, such as mycophenolate mofetil, and a tapering dosage of oral prednisone may stabilize the patient. Good response to immunosuppressive and immunomodulatory therapies are reported. There is no consensus on the treatment of Suzak syndrome because of the lack of large well-designed studies addressing this rare, underreported disease. Thank you.